Welcome back to Cookies and Milk, episode 93. I'm your host, William. Welcome back to Cookies and Milk, episode 93. I'm your host, Ben. Uh, we're having rainbow cookies today. As per the usual. It's been As a second, actually. It's Pride Month. We're talking about that, huh? No, we're you not. You we talk about it? No. Fine. <laughs> no, I you was... twisted my pinky too long. You only twist your pinky. Ah! <laughs> what happened? No, we're talking to, uh, the Kingdom Hearts 3 full oath song it's got... buzzing around on the internet. Quote, unquote, released. No, it's not. Uh, it's, it's... I saw it on a... Sputtering around. I saw it on a Tumblr post. Oop, People... Oop, oop, one, two, three. I got all three. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> ben got two at the end. Uh, uh, Rakdos, Orzov... No. Gruul. Bant. Gruul? Bant. Bant. <laughs> t -mir. Bant. Third band, <laughs> um, but it was a video that Ben and I watched uh, of a of a very weird like Japanese event. Yeah, and people didn't give a shit. People weren't quiet. <laughs> they needed to shut up. Uh, but it was like weird because it was watching like the story so far of Riku, even though it was almost more Roxas. Roxas, yeah, Riku was not the main. But it character. was the Dawn book. Uh, and then it was uh, some Xehanort stuff that was all, like, poorly paced. So we had book stuff. Uh, it looked like cutscenes, like, for credits or some nonsense. It was more about Ventus. Yeah. So, it's good. It was fine. The song was alright. It's it, it went on too long. Yeah, that's sort of the thing. When you don't care about the video, the song's not going to be able to get you there. The yeah. best part about the song as it stands now is that it makes you want more. Yeah. Uh, and it's... So it's unexpected when you finally get more. Yeah. That was a little segue. I'm segueing into my topic for today, which is oh. unexpected moments in video games. Okay. I got the trophy in Shadow of War for uh, shaming an assassin until he goes berserk. Oh, no. Um, I did not understand how this system worked. Oh, I think before... So, for those of you unaware at home, you maybe across the table, uh, when you shame someone, what how it normally works, you shame them to reduce their level. Uh, so oh, I can, know how it works. And you know that when you shame them fully Ugh. to where they become a maniac, they go way the fuck up. Oh. Yeah, I shamed him. He went to level 7 and I shamed him. And he went to level 60. That's fun. I was level tw I'm level 25. That's fun. Uh, the saddest thing about it... So, let me tell you the story of this dude. Uh, mm. He's a coward. Number one. Well, okay. Uh, I had recruited him, and he betrayed me. And that's the... That's how you know it's going to happen to you. Uh, is when you betray me. Uh, so... But what he would do so consistently is he would ambush me, and then he would retreat. Uh... So, the first time I saw him, I was already fighting, like, three other dudes, and then he showed up and he's like, eh, fuck you, ranger. Uh, like a Power Rangers villain. Yes. Uh, and I beat the heck out of him, and then he started to run away. And then I think he did escape, and I was like, that's annoying. Uh, so I was like, alright, whatever, I'm gonna hunt this dude down. And I went into my, uh, map, selected his, uh, skull on the thing, and then backed out, and then he ambushed me as soon as I got out of the screen. And I was like, what? Uh, and so I beat him up. And then he tried to escape again. Tried to retreat. Right. And I said, no. Shamed him. Hunted him down. Or no, he ambushed me again. I shamed him, and then I hunted him down, shamed him. He became a maniac. Even while he was a maniac. He ran away. He would still try and retreat. He is a coward in a blood. He's cowardly in his, he's in his blood. Uh, Howard is so in his blood. I got the... And then when I got him down... Uh, I Cookie! Got him, Cookie, get out of here, man. I got him to his... Uh, I got him down. Like, I beat him and I was hit him with an execution. And then he gave me the cutscene. And he's just, like, there clicking at me. And I'm like, this is kind of sad, man. And it's like... Because it's supposed to be, like, a long dialogue, but it's just clicks. Yeah. And then it's like, tricky escape! And then he left. And I was like, are you serious? I just fought a level 60 dude and he's gonna just escape? Yeah. Uh, That's insane. Yeah. 
And then, uh, I got him and he did it again. The one thing I dislike about it, I like the breaking system, but I wish he had, like, had actual words for me at the end of it. Yeah. Because we'd had a long fight together. I we'd wanted it to, rivals. it would have been nice if, for it to have been just, like, please kill me. Yeah. But then Tricky escaped. He wants to live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wants to live. I wanted to see, I wanted him to say something. He, I'm sorry I ran. He doesn't, he never <laughs> said anything. he ran. Anything. He, like, uh, uh, and then I found another dude. Uh, and he was, like, level 30-something. Yeah. And I couldn't... Um, and I think this one happened first. And I shamed him because I had to shame him. Because uh, I couldn't recruit him. Oh, yeah. he's too high level. And I shamed him, and it just went... Gained 29 levels. And I was like... <laughs> oh, no! He what? Because <laughs> the game didn't... It, and it didn't even, like, linger on that. You just walked the fuck away. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was so scared and confused. I was like, is that a glitch? Then I found him again, and it didn't do the, because what happens is, uh... They say you shamed me and stuff, right? Um, yeah, normally they talk to you, but the other guy, when I met him then, uh, he, his title changed. He went from blank the blank to blank the maniac. Oh. Uh, and would click at me and, like, yell at me. This guy was straight silent. Yeah. Like, he... That's the scary ones. But his title didn't change. <gasps> so I don't know what happened. He broke. I, he just... and He had no reason to break, though. So I'm sitting there fighting him. Also, he has a shield up, which is stupid. Because uh, if he adapts to the me jumping over him, that's it. It's, so, in, it's almost impossible for me to fight him. You gotta have people with you. So I did. I, like, warped a bunch of people around him. And then a bunch more people showed up. And I was like, fuck, I'm gonna have to deal with them or they're gonna kill my little dudes. And my so little I, dudes. So I went to go, uh, like, start corrupting them. And then he walked up and stabbed me once and I died. I went from <laughs> full to dead. And I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> also, something they can do, and this is dumb as shit, they can heal themselves. Huh. Some bosses have a thing where if they just, like, sit down and, like, charge for a second, they can stand up and heal. And it's just like... What is, it, that, that, what is that, them jerking off or something? Maybe. I don't know how it works work. <laughs> uh, but they I gotta kill the ranger! And it kills me because I have to fight these guys, not in a, like, a straight up, I'm dueling you way, but nine times out of ten it's like, I have to just, like, move around you, get some stealth attacks, move around you, like, flip over you, collect some arrows, and if I'm just, like, out collecting arrows and they're just doing that, I'm just like, yeah, fuck this. That's bullshit. Also, the tricky escape, bullshit. But that was my unexpected thing that happened in gaming this week. Of just like, I was so scared. Uh. So I I think I can talk about like Nuka World being an unexpected thing in gaming. Yeah. I didn't expect Nuka World to be as terrifying as it was when I first started because I'm playing through Fallout Four in survival mode, which is the hardest difficulty for Fallout Four because like, need food, need water, Stimbax can dehydrate you, uh, you can get ill, it, saving is cancelled, un unless you get to a bed and then it's auto-saved. Uh, so Nuka World starts you out, it auto-saves you right there as soon as you get off the train. And you have to run through a gauntlet. You are not allowed to leave, it is an incredibly difficult gauntlet, and there is a bed halfway through. And you have to fight through. And by the end of it, I was just jetting my way through. Because <laughs> uh, there's a, a... You get out of the tunnels. Like, you go into tunnels, and then you go out. So... And when you get out, it's like the home stretch. And people can shoot from the cages down at you, and nice. that kills you so fast. Uh, and then when you get through there, it's like a guy in a souped-up power armor that you cannot kill. Unless you have... Spoilers. You have a squirt gun. Nice. You have to shoot him with a squirt gun, which has limited range, so you have to get close to him. So I was just... I had made a bunch of buff jet, which is buff out and jet, which gives you like a lot of strength and endurance, and freezes time for 10, 15 seconds. So I would buff jet, run up to him, spray him until I thought he was good, and then switch to a gun and just like cowardly shoot at him, and then I'd have my big tank buddy, my little tank robot that I made, uh, fight him for a bit while I cowered behind a Nuka-Cola, like a giant Nuka-Cola bottle, 
Uh, well, like, my sliver of health slowly inched back up because of the stim pack I took. And I'm just like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, and I killed him. And he has a cool power armor frame. Oh, yeah? But there's no power armor thing to put it on. Nice. So I'm stuck with that huge thing in Nuka World. And I sent my tank buddy away, who is the only one with the, enough carrying capacity to hold it all. You sent them away because they can't go through the doors? Yeah, and they can't go through doors, and I got a follower that's specific to Nuka World, Nuka yeah. World, so I'm like, I might as well take him along, but now I have all this power armor, and I have to run back to the wasteland, put it all in a power armor frame, and then come back, but nice. I can't, because I'd be so over-encumbered, and it hurts you when you're over-encumbered. Jesus. Uh, and it, eventually, when you're over-encumbered, your legs break. Like, Ugh. if you stay in the over-encumbered status for long enough, your legs break. Right, but I mean, nobody stays in the over-encumbered status. For I've stayed in the over-encumbered status for a little while. Uh, but, goddamn. Because uh, I didn't notice it at first, because I was, like, working on the workshop while over-encumbered. And then I was moving slow, I'm like, but I my AP should have refreshed. I can run again. <laughs> oh, my legs are broken. <laughs> I'm like, how did that happen? And I was just, like, digging around, and then I realized that over-encumbered breaks your legs, because it happened again, I'm like, oh, no! <laughs> oh, that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, unexpected things. Uh, Nuka World being way too difficult for uh, level 30 or 40-something. Nuka World is a place conquered by raiders. Yes, by three raider factions. They're all working together under you. Technically. Because like they, you passed the gauntlet? Like they don't want to play nice. Um, but And they use slaves. And it's like, well, I want to release the slaves. So it's like, go to their dens and shoot them dead. Surra and they, you never get a chance. Like, I looked it up and you do not get a chance to get them vulnerable. They are just sitting on their thrones constantly surrounded by all their men. Oh, so you have to... And as soon as you kill one, the whole park is against you. Jesus Christ. So I'm like, oh, survival mode? Here I come! <laughs> so I'm like, I gotta... I wanna do that. I wanna do that. Give it back to the traitors, but like... Oh, That's a lot of... Oh, no. <laughs> like, part of me wants to... Part of me wishes there was a thing I could do where it's like, keep one faction alive. Because one is called the pack, and they're all about animals, and I'm like, I want to kill you. Yeah. One is just about blood and murdering, and I want to kill them. Yeah, of course. The other is just about getting caps. It's fine. That being said, I did, the first job they gave me was an assassination job. Of course. But it's for killing another raider, so... Sure. Why I guess that, you're going to do it anyways. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Shadow of War is full of uh, Beastmasters. Yeah. Uh, and they always get mad at me, and I'm like, I'm sorry. Because, uh, like, they'll show up and they'll be like, for every, uh, what are they? The, the little. Caragors? Not, no, the little, like, fleshy things. Aww. Uh, they crawl out of the ground. I can't remember what the fuck their names are. I can't either. Uh, but he's like, for each one of those you killed, I'm gonna hurt you just as bad. Uh, Why? Because he loves them. He's like, uh, <laughs> that's his thing. He introduces himself as Blake the that thing. He loves them. <laughs> he loves them. Uh, and then there are people who are writing Karagor and are like, that's not how you write a Karagor. This is how you write a Karagor. I'm like, I did, like, dominate its will yeah. to do this, but it's my friend. Mm. We're friends. <laughs> no. I got my dire Karagor that I can summon. Dude, I get so, uh, you know, because uh, I summoned my dire Karagor to ride around in a battle. I didn't know that. I do. You know that. <laughs> oh? Uh, and it... So, this guy showed up. He ambushed me, and he was riding a Karagor, and I was like, you're gonna regret that. Baby, Karagor is gone. And then he didn't say it, but he basically did. He was like, you're gonna regret that. Because then he immediately lifted up my Karagor, <gasps> threw me off, and killed it. And I was like, I tried so... I've been fighting so goddamn hard to keep this thing alive, you fucking coward. <laughs> I've been flossing a lot recently. Yeah. I feel like I have a cavity... Yeah. Uh, are any of your te teeth really deep? 
Those are cavities. No, I mean, like, but it's like, one side is kind of sensitive, but the other side is not sensitive, but it is also deep. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's... It's, it's hard to judge. Yeah. Like, because it's not black or anything, and most cavities are. Yeah, I'm also not going to the dentist, so... I need to go to the dentist. Like, that's something I need to do. I need to go see a bunch of doctors. <laughs> yeah? My body is a nightmare. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Both my toes, both my big toes are fucked up. Oh, yeah, that my makes sense. My bones aren't good. Our right. joints are bad. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> oh. I hope this picked up on the... Anyway, picked up on the podcast. My teeth aren't good. And I mean, flossing feels good sometimes. It does. I mean, it's good to have your mouth clean. Um, uh, take the cookies and milk. Did a hygiene podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I drink a gallon of milk and chop out some cookies. I've been having a bad relationship with milk recently. Yeah? Yeah, I think I'm going to cut it out of my diet. I tried to cut it out of my diet all last week. Like, I didn't have any, except I had cookies and milk. And then once I ran out of it for the week, that was it. It's not giving you anything good? You're not uh, feeling good? It's weird. It's like a lot. I don't... Oh, you're giving you're having too much milk. Yeah, I think that's sort of my problem, but it's hard to have it in smaller doses because my breakfast is so big. Yeah. But uh, then I got... So last week I was like, blueberries and granola bars every morning for breakfast. Mm. Uh, and that works. The downside is that there's no fruit you can have that's fine with brushing your teeth. Yeah. Bananas, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, because... But I mean, you can't have oranges, obviously. Those are the worst. Oh, yeah. Blueberries, though, also aren't good. And I brush my teeth in the morning when I go out, so I had to, like, rearrange my whole morning schedule. Wake up, brush teeth, get dressed. Mm. Yeah, you don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I brush my teeth every time before adventures. That's smart. No, it's not. Because, like... Because of the pizza? Because of the pizza. Because it, it, it has never ruined the pizza before until last week, where it ruined the sauce... It ruined that gar- garlic sauce? Yeah. Yeah. You know what's ruining the pizza for me? What? Is that I eat it three days of the week. Yeah, afterwards. it's not good. You shouldn't do that. Uh, so last week I was real healthy. I was like, blueberries and granola bars every morning. Pizza for lunch and every then, day. But, and then I have like water and carrots for my snack. I feel then, like... Pizza. What is your... Okay. It's fine to have that sometimes... Like if I I don't know it's like if you're if you're trying so hard to be healthy. Hmm. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but this week I have lost it. It was Sunday morning. Uh, and Rain it, is falling. We didn't have any bread to make eggs for breakfast, and we were like, scramble it. You still have a toast. You don't need toast exactly with scrambled eggs. We wanted toast. Yeah, I understand. Uh, so we got you ever hold cream. on me. Oh no! <laughs> so this week, oh, you have Krispy Kreme for the rest of the Krispy day. Krispy Kreme for breakfast. Uh, a banana <laughs> on the way to work. Oh, pizza for lunch. <laughs> oh no, the banana. A fruit cup, a banana, carrots, Krispy Kreme donuts. Mm. And pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, my breakfast is sometimes... If the morning... If the... The orange juice is bad right now. The orange juice upstairs is bad. I don't I like have it. a hard relationship with orange juice. Yeah? You gotta... I don't know what it is. Juices in general... I feel like they're always hit or miss. That's fair. Exceptions to this rule, V8 Splash. You love this stuff. I love this stuff. It's great. No, but I'm... So... My ideal breakfast... Sure. Show me your your ideal breakfast. It's episode 93. (laughs) We've been at this for two plus years. Not Definitely not two plus years, right? No, it's been like a... We did the math before. It's like a one and a half years. Yeah. So, my ideal breakfast has meat in it. Yes. I, I need meat in my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> no, but, so, uh, meat and syrup. 
Wait, I'm doing this right. Yeah, it's 700 days, 100 podcasts, 700 days. Yes. 1.917 years. Oh. So. No, so. A breakfast I've been enjoying a lot recently is two pieces of toast, butter both sides, uh, two slices of cheese, put ham in there. Okay, yeah. Lunch meat ham, tastes... Butter both sides of the toast. Uh, no, butter both uh, sides on the yes, inside. the sides uh, that you're not touching. Yes. Uh, and then I put jelly on the outside. No. Oh, <laughs> deep fry that sucker. Oh, what? Why? Huh? Uh, that's not what jelly is. Uh, but preferably with a glass of orange juice. Because milk isn't the best pair with it. We've been at this for 1.8 years. Roughly 1.8 years. We were just talking about our breakfast. Mm. It took us a long time to get to the breakfast episode. I guess it is the antithesis of our podcast. The opposite? Yeah. Having breakfast and talking about something serious, something that matters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go to the doctor. <laughs> we're truly a podcast now. Uh, having breakfast and talking about hygiene? <laughs> <laughs> While I'm flossing on the podcast. Who are these people? <laughs> That's a, when in Billiam's podcast. <laughs> uh, breakfast sandwiches and grapes. <laughs> Wait, no. Juice and... Juice and waffles. Juice and granola. Juice and waffles. You, waffles aren't healthy. Yeah, it's okay, gotta yeah. Be juice, and juice and granola. Okay. Juice and fruit. Juice and fruit. Juice and fruit. Juice and fruit. It's too much. <laughs> Billiam, do you ever think juice and fruit... I thought I was when... <laughs> You're both. I thought I was when! How dare you say that about when? <laughs> When's voice isn't that high. I thought I was when. <laughs> what if I just am, a, like, just a small little octave lesser than that, and you're like, that's fine. That's, <laughs> that's when's voice. <laughs> yeah, I'm when. How dare you? Wait. Yeah, I'm when. <laughs> <laughs> What's Billiam sound like? Hey, I'm Billiam. <laughs> hey, I'm Billiam. Hey, I'm when. This podcast is too I'm going to fruit. Juice and fruit. It's too much. <laughs> too high voices. Too, too high voices. Too much vitamin C. Oh, it's, so it's just oranges. <laughs> it's oranges and orange juice. Oh, God. It's just it's orange juice and lemon oranges. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the thumbnail is just the color orange. <laughs> oh, it's so bright. Oh, you can't brand that well. <laughs> it plays hygiene. It plays hygiene. <laughs> And we're gonna brush our teeth now! Oh, Jesus, these oh, two, these psychopaths. Billiam and when you are heroes! Because <laughs> brushing is the most important thing to do! Oh! Billiam and when or juice and fruit? Juice and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, we should get together and record juice and fruit one day. We should do a juice and fruit episode where we brush our teeth after eating a full orange and orange Ooh. juice. So that's the question. Should we um, should we should I invert the colors on this episode or to make it orange and green? Yeah. Oh, I was just thinking like an orange backdrop and like just take the fill tool and just go orange as much as possible. Okay. Or should I do that for the... Should I save it? For juice and fruit? For juice and fruit. I don't know. Like... Now I want to do the antithesis for unsolicited advice. What's solicited advice? They're, <laughs> they're asked. Yeah, the, I mean, that's literally the... <laughs> solicited advice. What? Where they get asked... Boxic for... and tubble gum. <laughs> I got the hiccups. You got the hiccups. <laughs> Double gum. They talk. About, what do they talk about? What do they get advice asked about? It's just. Uh, it's just it's real life stuff. It's again. just financing. 
Oh boy, what a rough. They, they're stock mart. They're stock broke. They're <laughs> stock broke. Hey, I'm boxic and I'm double gum. And welcome to our, uh, like, welcome to welcome our to solicited stock advice. And, welcome to solicited advice, our stock analysis show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to work. Last you time you put about on the glasses. Dow. <laughs> Jesus. Microsoft looks pretty bad in the stock market. What do you think, Boxic? <laughs> Winners and losers. <laughs> Ever get those ads on? Uh, yes, YouTube? I've gotten that before. I've watched it. I kind of sitting around and watching it for I a little bit. I like them. Yeah, I actually like them. Uh, he did a bit on Amazon, and it was great. Yeah, I was like, uh, I'm glad I sat through the ad. He's funny. He is. He's a funny bald man. That's Boxic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we're face claiming these people. <laughs> Oh, I don't know any other financing. We definitely don't know any health aficionados. That's Dr. Oz. Oh. It's gotta be YouTube. Also, he's not an aficionado. <gasps> Billy and Wen would never sell you supplemental products. They don't talk about miracle cures. Yeah. They just talk about eating a healthy breakfast. Too much. <laughs> Isn't that just good mythical morning? I have no good. idea what Good Mythical Morning is. Insane! I have at least, I have a cursory knowledge of it. What the fuck are you talking about? Good Mythical Morning, uh, is, it's like, it's, uh, like a, what the fuck, it's a show between two friends called oh. Rhett and Link. Uh. Oh. Yeah. You've seen them. I've heard one, their names. One guy is, like, tall and has a beard, and the other is, like, kind of short and dark hair and has, like, glasses. They're, like, they have families now. They're, like, full... Men, <laughs> you're not a real man until you have a child. Uh, oh no! <laughs> How's it? Go? We should end the podcast. What do you at? What do we at? What do you at? Twenty-six minutes. That's not bad. Or twenty-seven minutes soon. Let me go a little bit longer. I'm out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> we were out of stuff to talk about in episode five. <laughs> <laughs> we have been running on fumes <laughs> on juice and fruit <laughs> for a long time. I'll say this. Juice and Fruit's going to be a worse sounding podcast. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if we're going to be able to keep it up. Here in the mmm of the, here in the of the fruit. What the fuck? How do you eat a fruit? I can't save it. Save it for, save juice, it for and juice and fruit. fruit. <laughs> I got to eat it messily now. <laughs> hey, I'm the time to dig into this or I can't get the bitch open. <laughs> When? <laughs> what a pouty mouth! <laughs> you sound like Mickey Mouse cursing. <laughs> That's the funniest thing to I say. I can't get this bitch open. Look, I'm using for that uh, billion, and that's when. <laughs> It's fermented juice. They're drinking wine. I have a juice and fruit after hours. I got some juice now. It's a Pinot Noir. (laughs) (laughs) You have no idea what alcohol is. Pinot Noir is a wine. (laughs) I don't know what alcohol is either. I was a good dad down here for a. Juice and fruit. Or we drink alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. No, I meant like to tell oh, us... for juice and fruit. Just, just, just to tell us what uh, alcohol is. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, is a Pinot Noir a uh, wine? It is. It's a red wine. Oh. Nice. Jesus. <laughs> I think it's time to end the podcast. That's probably correct. The, co- the cookies oh. were good as always. Rainbow cookies are good. Yeah. Anyway, I've been your host, William. I've been your host, Ben. And that has been episode 93 of Cookies and Milk. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and ch- tune in for Juice and Fruit. <laughs> Juice and Fruit. I gotta come over at like 9 o'clock on a Saturday and just... It's gotta be, yeah, it's gotta be Saturday morning. Yeah. Alright, bye guys.